Our first guest tonight is a remarkable and unmistakable man. He's a terrific actor and musician, too. His newest EP with the Mildred Snitzer Orchestra is called Plays Well With Others. Say hello to Jazzy Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you for taking our staff members' children to the Dinosaur Museum. You gave them a day of rest. It's that, nice. Uh, yeah, I ran into one of the moms uh, backstage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. It was memorable. I love those kids. They had fun, a fun with day. You. I heard that. Would you just take your ring off? Is this... Um... You're so... You're like a Sherlock Holmes. You are so <laughs> observant. You could do police work, couldn't you, of some kind? Yes, I just slipped that off. If yeah. I was a psychiatrist, I would take that to mean you want to marry me. You suddenly removed your wedding ring in my presence. I mean, that's, uh, there's got to be something to that. Is that the only uh, uh, analysis of that? That's it. That's the only one. Yeah. <laughs> my wife is backstage, Emily. Oh, well, yeah. you we'll know say my goodbye wife. to her now. Yeah. You ever, I don't think you've no, ever met I've not my met wife. your wife, but I do see you every once in a while. I actually look for you every day as I'm driving by your house on the way to work. I just take a little extra look to see if you're there. Is that true? Every it is time true. I come out of my garage, I look to see if you're there. If when you <laughs> By the way, you have a very neat garage, which is impressive. Very neat. Thank you very much. Yes, that door goes up and you see, I don't know what your garage looks like, but I'm I was talking to somebody. I've got a proclivity, I think is the word, for organization, order, and neatness. I'm not a freak about it, I wouldn't say, but I've always wanted to tidy up. And our garage, because I know that can be a place of accumulation. Yes, it is, in my well, case. Well, yeah. I know. And now that we've got a couple of kids, we've got a five and a seven-year-old, uh, you know, gear is uh, mounting oh, yeah. up. But so far, the garage has been It's pristine. impressive. Kind of like your teeth. You said you had no cavities, or you've never had a cavity in your whole life. No, no, no. Nor has my wife. Wow. So, yes. Is so that how that... you met? <laughs> Yes, at a no cavity convention. <laughs> no, we met at the uh, gym on Sunset Boulevard, the Equinox. You ever go there? No, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Hey, by the way, I noticed your ring. I just noticed that yes. she, my, she wears something like that. That yeah. tells you how you're sleeping, how many yeah. steps you've gotten. It's how called... is that thing? Because she swears by it. It's fun. And I, yeah. Really? Yeah. It's, I mean, it doesn't necessarily do anything, but it does. It, what, it, you know what, for me, I sleep very well. It enables me to, through my phone, lord my sleep score over other people. When they <laughs> notice the ring, they're like, yeah, I got a 69 last night. I'm like, oh, 85. You know? No kidding. Yeah. That's Greek to me. I don't, I've never kind of done anything like that. But I am obsessed with sleep. You and you must be, too, to be so productive day after day. Uh, for me to do that, I need... How much sleep do you get every night? Seven hours, that's your number? Oh, eight hours, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah. How's your eyesight? <laughs> how Somehow I saw I, the ring, but... How many but am I holding up now? Eleven? I don't know. How many are there? <laughs> you, you don't care. Do you get eight, you get eight um, hours of sleep every night? I like, I like eight very much. As oh. a matter of fact, last night, um, not that you asked, I got a nice... I got a nice seven, uh, and I felt, maybe it was just psychological, but I felt something... I did my, around 5 a.m., I did my piano homework, went down to the, well, the lobby. We're staying in a hotel right now because that house is getting renovated. Yeah, that's why I haven't seen you, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. well, that's right. Do yeah. you notice all the work going on there? Oh, yeah, the yeah, sure. I'm yeah. getting a lot of stuff done. I'm very excited about it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so we're at a hotel nearby. Uh, they let me play the piano in, the, in this little place. Little split play. Wow. I did my hour, and then I came back, had breakfast. This is fascinating, I know. And, um, <laughs> and then... Took a nap. Oh, breakfast. I topped that off with about an, another hour and ten. Another you got hour your and eight. I felt very good. I still feel very good from How that. How old nap. are your sons? My sons are five and seven. And they don't come barging in at six o'clock and wake you up. 
Um, Mine does. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, every morning. Yeah. Really? Yeah, every morning, 6 o'clock, he squirrels his way in there, usually naked for Billy, no reason. Billy? Yeah. Yeah, mine are naked a lot, too. Yeah. It's very delightful. Yeah. I know. And you and you love it when they come in. Well, I I'd too. like them to come in an hour later, but yeah. It's, you know. I know. So does Mama, so does Emily. She's like, sleep, go back to sleep. I'm still sleeping. Yeah. You know, they never go back to sleep. No. Never. No, Never. they like to be up there. Have they seen the Jurassic Park movies with you in them? Yeah. Uh, we have denied them mostly screen time uh -huh. completely. Our phones, you know, da, 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 except they're, they really want to really do everything. And we took them to a couple of movies. I showed them Jurassic Park, the original movie from 93, on, you know, at home. They were a little scared, but they liked it a lot. Yeah. Um, and then this last one came out in the theater, and for the first time, I had never taken them to a movie in a movie theater. Oh, you know, wow. COVID happened, da, da, da. but we took them to a movie theater. In fact, I think it was IMAX. It was just oh. out, and so we took them to that movie. Do the they think movie. you know dinosaurs now? Is that, I mean, do you, do they, are they confused about the, the fact that it's not real? Interesting question. I, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Their little minds, as you know, are vast and mysterious. Yeah, sure. Uh, from moment to moment, from day to day, what are they thinking? What do they know? What no do idea, they? No idea, right? Yeah, no idea. <laughs> you know, and and you know, people stop me and they go, "Yes, you're. What do you do? You know." And then I bring them on the sets. I was just on this set of Wicked. I'm not supposed to talk about that. Oh, but, you were. But it's been out and about. So they were there in London. We were shooting, and they were there when we were shooting Jurassic World Dominion. So they were on the sets, and they saw them building and painting the dinosaurs, you know, and saw me acting with them. I don't know what they think. <laughs> they, I mean, what must their, their dad is with dinosaurs and a witch and two witches. Right. One of them's good, one of them's not. Well, I don't know, you know, because we, we showed them A Wizard of Oz, one of my favorite movies. Yeah. It was too scary for that them. That movie still scares me. There's something about that movie that strikes a chord of fear in me. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Me too. The witch and is that, terrifying. That witch Margaret is terrifying. Margaret Hamilton. Hamilton, yeah. Uh, terrifying. Um, you should see our wishes, which is Cynthia Erivo and Ariana Grande. Uh, very, very good. But I'll tell you, I shouldn't talk about it, but I was shooting one day. <laughs> and I found myself tearing up uh, in fear. Uh, you know, a childhood fear came back to me. And I told Cynthia Erivo, I said, you know, I'm remembering my first dream that I ever had. And my first dream was that I was tied to a tree stump and a witch because I'd seen Snow White, I think, also, with a very scary queen witch that I don't know. Yeah. Had tied me to this tree stump, and I thought it was going to chop off my head. I must have been, you know, four or something like that. And she went, peaches, peaches. <laughs> and then I had two older brothers. We shared a bedroom from then on. The next couple of weeks, whenever the lights would go out, they'd go, peaches, peaches, and try to torment me. But witches scare me. Yes, yeah. and, they, and then I showed them that movie, and we didn't get through it. Charlie, especially the older one, believe it or not, when the, when the head and the fire came out, he said, that's enough, I'm out. I remember out. every Easter Sunday, they used to show it on television, and we'd sit there and watch it. I'd be just like, when is Jesus coming back? This is terrifying. I mean... <laughs> The two stories do uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, intersect in a lot of funny ways. We're going to take a break. We're talking about your uh, record and um, your special guest star that you'll be performing with tonight. Yes, please. Jeff Goldblum is here. We'll be right back. We are back. With the great Jeff Goldblum, who's got a band, the Mildred Snitzer Orchestra. You're going to be playing tonight with Frida Payne, who's one of my favorite singers. Mine, too. I love the her. The great Frida Payne. Do you remember? I remember when that song was on the radio. And the gold. Ba, da, 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 ka, ka. It's a great ba, song. Da, 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 it's a great song. And if you've seen recently, which I looked up, her singing it in 1971, you know, amazing. But she has reached her. She's in full blossom. Excellent. At, in my humble opinion, and, and at, at her best self. Wait till you hear us sing this song with her. You got her. You got Who else is on the album with you, singing-wise? Well... Kelly Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson is on the album? How did you get Kelly Clarkson to do that? I'll tell you exactly. Uh, we had kind of cooked up this idea and aspiration. Gee, you know who would be good singing this song? And here's the song she should sing. I, shortly after that, went on her show, the last time I was on promoting Jurassic World Dominion, and it just popped out of my mouth. I hadn't planned it. I said, hey, Kelly, you would never consider you know, singing a song with us. As a matter of fact, we have the song that is, might be right for you. You know that, uh, uh, I land lots of land, da, 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 da. don't fence me in, you know that song. Yeah. She said, okay, yeah. 
And I thought, well, you know, this is taped like we do, and may, she'll cut that out if, you know. But sure enough, it was on the show, and then we kind of kept pursuing it, and she did it. So I put her on the spot. Great. That's why I'm asking you right now. I would love to. on our net, really? Uh, yeah, I mean, you wouldn't love it, but I would like, you would cut that out is what would wind up Not happening. Not true. What's yes. your favorite song? What do you imagine yourself singing? Oh, boy, I, you know. When I was, you know, I was in the jazz band in high school. In, in, I, I did not know that. Yeah, I played the bass clarinet in the jazz band. I, I read that. Only, Wait a minute. The only you, bass clarinetist in the jazz band. Do you still play? My brother played clarinet for a bit. Do you still play bass clarinet? Every once in a while, yeah. I'd yeah. love to hear you play. Yeah. I'm not good. I'm like at a 10th grade level. Like, uh, 10th grade. 10th grade, yeah. yeah. That's the perfect uh, thing. <laughs> and you would sing, too. That would well, I wouldn't really sing with the band, no. But, uh, you know, right. we did, like, On the Street Where You Live. That was a good jazzy uh, I song. I have often walked. Down the street before. That's the one. But but I'm from 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 always stay beneath my feet. Before. These guys know it. Cleto is in the band with me too. Several stories. Hi, Jimmy Kimmel. Etc. Uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Very good. Yeah, mm. that's the one. Yeah. I think you head. sing it better than me. I think it's a hit. Uh, <laughs> when people go see you in concert, it, are you playing the whole time, or do you talk and tell stories? How does the show go? I talk and tell stories, but I don't plan on it. What we do is, if this were a gig, we'd play a little, and then I'd say, and then John Master would hand me, our band manager, and he does this, whatever you call this, he would hand me a piece of paper, and I haven't seen it before, and it would go, oh, here's a quiz to play with the audience. And I cold read that quiz, and, we, and it, it uh, lubricates a conversation, initiates a conversation. Is there a prize, or the audience has to just shout out the answers? They like, can you give the them answers. a quiz question that you would give typically? Or? Well, for instance, for instance, I like to play this game, the movie game, name an actor or an actress, and then remind me, I want to tell you about another word that I think you're, will interest you. Oh. And, but but na na name a, an actress or an actor or a the title of a movie. Go ahead, I'll show you how it works. Okay, all right. So, the Graduate, I heard. So that brings us, now we have to name an actor or an actress in that movie. Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman. Now you have to name a movie that he's done. Tootsie. Tootsie. Okay. That brings us to Gina Davis. That brings us to The Fly. Brings us to Jeff Goldblum. I'm oh, not... Oh, wow. wow. That's the show. That's the show. So we do that, uh -huh. and then I and then I play piano. That's fun. Yeah, I like that kind very of show. Ke Kevin Bacon esque. What about Kevin Bacon? How would you connect yourself to him? Well, Kevin Bacon. Mm -hmm. Let me see. It's not. This is the point of the game. Is not connecting oh, my, myself not. to anybody. Oh, I thought it was. You may have gotten the wrong idea. <laughs> but Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Well, takes us to JFK. He was in. Uh huh takes us to Kevin Costner, uh -huh. takes us to Silverado, takes us to Jeff Goldberg. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> Is it true that you studied mime as a young man? Uh, I did. Hey, the word, by the way, you were supposed to remind me oh. that I wanted to say is, what does, what does this mean to you, Ischia? Uh, it's an island in Italy where my family is from. Yes, my I, grandfather's from. I just read from. that today. Your grandmother? Grandfather, yeah. Joan, Joan, Joan? My, that's my mother, Joan. Wasn't yeah. she from Ischia? Though? No, her father is from there. I yeah. see. Uh -huh. Hey, guess what? I just filmed this thing in Spain and we shot in Ischia. Oh, there you go. Has yeah, anyone mentioned me? <laughs> no. No, but we're we're but you know uh, we're we're taking a vacation with the kids uh, for about a week in Ischia. Oh, you if are. You need anything from oh. your. Homestead. Great. Well, I'll put you in touch with the family. Have you ever been there? I have, yeah. I, I love it. It's the first time I ever went into the Mediterranean Sea. Wow. Salty, warm. I loved it. You never, you've not been in the... I had never, and this was like a year ago. It's the first time I've been in the Mediterranean. It was great. Are you trying to get out of doing some mime for us? Is okay, that what's watch happening? Okay, no, I'm not. No, but I wanted to bring up this game. And one of my favorite movies was shot there, After the Fox was shot there. You ever see After the Fox? No, I don't know. Oh, I recommended Peter After Sellers. After the Fox is Peter Sellers, who was in Pink Panther. Yes. Who was with, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> mime. Yes. I studied mime. When I first started to act, there was a mime teacher at Carnegie Mellon University in 1967, and I fell in love with uh, acting and mime uh, because it hadn't fallen on cultural hard times yet, as we like to say. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, there was no uh, this at the mall and all that stuff. <laughs> there was Marcel Marceau, whose hundredth birthday was yesterday. Saw that on Google. Yeah. As you know. The Google I, Doodle. I saw him live in concert. Oh, wow. It's a very high art, the way he practiced it. And we were encouraged to see this movie, if you haven't seen it, called Children of Paradise, 
or in French, Les Enfants du Perdi, there's an actor called Jean-Louis Béraud who does fantastic mime in it. You'll really like it. Oh. Of course, I lived through the Shields and Yarnell period. And yeah, and right, that. yeah. So yeah. all of that. But I loved mime. I thought, hey, instead of going to New York and being an actor, I'm going to go to France and study with the crew and just apprentice for 20 years and learn how to, you know, I can still wiggle one ear at a time. Look. <laughs> That's part of what you learned? So I'm very controlled. I know how to control every aspect of my body. Can you do a little bit of I'm it? I'm like an Indian fakir, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see. <laughs> let me see. Here, I'll do this. Here, just a snippet. I know nothing, but here. For, in for instance, I'll do it for you. For instance, if I was pulling this thread, you're not supposed to talk. It's like charades, I right, suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pulling the thread. <laughs> and it's, getting, it's, getting, it's getting heavier. Oh, it's getting heavy. Oh, oh, oh it's pulling me there. Oh, I, the there you go. That's yeah, all. Right. Really good. Thank you. Sorry, but I had to see it. <laughs> all right. What are you going to do? You're going to go get ready. You're going to go get the band. You're going to do a little sound check, and you're going to play some music for us. I can't us. thank you enough. This is a full meal. We'll be playing uh, Lazy Afternoon, Ooh. arranged by our great guitar player, John Story. All right. Very and good. wait till you see the band. Right. And, uh, Plays well with others. Is out now. Jeff Goldblum, everybody. We'll be back with Tiana Taylor.